Hey, good morning. In the last video, we were showing buttoning up the bottom of the motor, putting the oil pan on, and showing some of the differences in the various oil pans that are available in the LS motor. We ran into a little problem. So I wanted to go over what that problem was, show it to you, so it doesn't happen to you. I want to do a quick recap of the oil pans. This is the truck oil pan. You see, it's pretty deep. You don't realize how deep it is until you compare it to other oil pans. This is the LS3. And you can see it's considerably taller than even the LS3, but the depth of the sump uh, from front to back on the LS3 does not lend itself to uh, being a good swap candidate. The next two are both LS1 pans. The difference being the one on the left is a Chinese knockoff and the pan on the right is a factory LS1. Uh, some minor differences, but they are very minor. The main thing I did notice, and I've seen this on some other pans, is on the left-hand side here, for whatever reason, there is not a hole. But drilling one would not be difficult. Just line up the gasket, mark it, drill it, and it's okay. The, uh, the baffle inside is almost identical, and it fits well. Consider the difference. The pan on the left was $87.00. The pan on the right was $237. There was a problem with the fitment, but let me show you what that problem was. Okay, this is the oil pickup tube that I already had that was labeled as an LS1. Looks like it fits in there just fine, no problem. I put the pan on. The pan did not seat quite right. Uh, in the back it was fine, but on the front of the motor, there was about an eighth of an inch gap that was hard to see, especially when I was putting it on from the bottom. Here's a picture quickly of what that looked like. What I found that when I was putting the pan on, it wanted to shift itself slightly to one direction. And here's why. If you look in the LS1 pan, Here's the notch for the oil pickup for the oil pickup tube. There is not a notch on this side, so the tube has to run on this side. I didn't notice that. This pickup tube is not the right tube. So let's take it off for just a moment and I'll show you what is. Very similar in design, but this one runs on the left-hand side. At least in this position, it's on the left-hand side. It's actually on the passenger side of the motor, as opposed to this other one, which totally ran on the opposite side. They both landed in the same spot. I didn't think about that. And the oil pan would fit, but it didn't quite fit right, but it looked like it was fitting properly until we saw that gap. Then we realized something was wrong, even though it was labeled as an LS1. So we went, this is a factory LS1 oil pickup tube. Now the reason I'm showing you this now, so if you choose not to buy a kit, uh, a nice kit runs at least 225 to 250, and that's using all aftermarket components. If you buy a factory LS1, you're gonna be spending closer to 350 and up for a complete kit, but, you can buy the, the parts separately. If you get the correct LS1 oil pickup tube like this, runs 32 bucks on Amazon. The oil pan itself, uh, you can find them on eBay, you can find them on Amazon, uh, easily under 100 bucks. Modify the windage tray yourself, that's a freebie. And the oil dipstick tube, with the measurements I'm about to give you, you can modify your truck tube to work as long as you're using your truck manifolds. If you're going to use uh, car manifolds, then the L works fine. And if you're going to use headers, then you're just going to have to play with it and see what works. Okay, a simpler way of determining the correct length of your truck dipstick using an LS1 pan is to measure the distance on the LS1 dipstick tube and how far the, the uh, dipstick 
extends beyond the end of the tube. And it extends beyond three and seven eighths inches. Kind of hard to see from this angle, but it's, it's three and seven eighths inches beyond the end of this tube. Well, the truck dipstick tube, regardless of how long it is, where it goes into the block is exactly the same measurement. So just extend the truck dipstick all the way through the tube, measure three and seven eighths inches, and the distance beyond that three and seven eighths will be the amount that needs to be overlapped. You don't want to remove it completely. You'll simply up higher in the tube, let's see here the tube, up higher in the tube where it's flat, you'll want to cut the dipstick, which is what we did here. And we overlapped it. We overlapped it. It was approximately one inch and put a little spot weld on either side and ground it down. Got to be careful when you're welding to dial it down so it's not too hot because this will burn through fairly easily. But that's the easiest way to come up with the correct length on your truck dipstick to work with the truck dipstick tube and truck manifolds with an LS1 oil pan. Okay, now that we got that sorted out, we'll get the pan on correctly. I'm going to take it off the engine stand because uh, we need to remove the flex plate and put on a flywheel and I noticed that the rear main seal is leaking. So I'm modifying my engine transmission cart so that I can put just the engine on it and be supported in the rear, have that uh, the back of the motor open so that I'm able to uh, remove the flex plate remove the rear main seal, clean it up, put a new one on, put the flywheel on, and we'll be ready to go. That's all I've got for you this morning. I'll catch you on the next video.